Welcome. We've been drinking MMA. This is our first fight on the prelims um, of uh, the fight night of Gamrot versus Fiziev. Uh, this fight is Vidal, Tamiris Vidal versus Rendon. Her name is Monsterat Rendon. She's 5-0, and Rendon is, and Vidal is. got a great record herself at 7-1, and um, and she only got subbed in her second fight, so she's basically, more or less, you could say, close to undefeated as well. So two really, really uh, good records, um, even though they have, don't have too much experience. My pick is going to be uh, Tamiris Vidal. Uh, my my pick as well uh, is Tamiris as well. Um, um, she throws a lot of kicks. Um, the reason that she kind of hesitates because she wants to grapple. She wants to get it on the ground because she's looking for that submission. For sure, like there, there are some things about Vidal that we like. Like she, she likes. It seems like she's comfortable striking. Like she likes to strike when Who's, she throws. You like she throws with some with some a dis- decent amount of power. You talking about Vidal? Vidal. Yeah, um, especially with her last KO victory, she looks like uh, she was setting up that knee in the UFC. Yeah, her first fight in the UFC, she KO'd uh, that flying knee. Or yeah, jumping Ramona knee. Pasquale. Yeah. Yeah. Like she was setting that thing up, and then boom. Yeah. And then, oh, it's over. Like, she, that Pasquale hunched over and said, yep, it's done. It was like a walk away. Not many women walk aways, I can tell you that much. Yeah, so, you know, Vidal is 25 years old, and her opponent, Rendon, is 34. And the thing is, Rendon only has five fights. So it seems like she started started her career the last three years ago at the age of 31. So it just seems like she's an okay fighter. But, you know, she's USA debut is really tough. UFC to debut for her. Yeah. UFC debut. It's a I think it's a bad matchup because Rendon does even though she kind of likes to pressure here and there, she doesn't really go for too many strikes and she'll go for like maybe to hold, try and hold you against the cage, try and body lock you, but she doesn't have phenomenal ways of getting you into the ground. Not talented yeah. that way. Um she has that jersey shell type striking, really stiff, but yeah. like re- defensive striking, like yes. hands really close to the face. Uh Elbows close to the body, like coming in like straight forward. Is it fair it's to say really she, stiff? Is it fair to say she doesn't really commit to her punches the way Vidal does? Well, you can't get power behind it when when your hands are like that. Exactly. Yeah. Defensive, like Lousy just said. Yeah. So even though she's five and zero, oh, it's all been decisions. So she doesn't have KO power, doesn't have like the you know submissions. Like it's hard for her to take people to the ground. So it's just one of those fighters who has a five and zero oh record. Uh, outside the UFC, but this is her first fight in the UFC against a, a woman who just KO'd her last opponent in the UFC. So that's our pick, guys. It's uh, uh, Tamira's Vidal. She's minus two fifty, two hundred fifty dollars to make a hundred, but we feel, you know, it's actually worth the. I would say it's worth the price. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I would better straight worth, up worth the parlay with yeah, a parlay. Money. The yeah. money line is the way to go, I think. I think so. I mean, who knows how she gets it done, but she's getting it done. Yeah. Right. Excited about this fight just to see Vidal do her thing and. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what Rendon has to offer if she can get it into the third round or something like that. But Vidal, I think it's going to be an e- easy victory. Yeah, comment down how we're doing. Uh, subscribe if you want. Thanks. Welcome to We've Been Drinking MMA Podcast. This is the second fight on the Gamrot Fiz- Fizia fight, and it, it's between Mizuki and Hannah Goldie. Prelims. Prelims. Second fight on the prelims. I'm going Mizuki. She's a technical striker. She has good head movement. Um, if there's a tie clinch or anything like that, she knows how to strike, knows how to get out of there. She has uh, good uh, angles on how she does things. Uh, she's she's just a better technical fighter in general. I like her too. I'm, uh, my pick is also Mizuki. Inui is her last name from Japan. She has been out for three years. Um, she but, tore, tore her ACL. Yeah, she tore, tore her ACL. Um but yeah, uh, she, you know she's she's actually her results are you know in, in from the past. Uh, you know Verna Jandaroba split decision loss for a championship in Invicta. I mean she's fought for the belt in Invicta, which essentially was the UFC for women. Yeah. yeah basically, so and it's Amanda Lemos. Yeah, and she lost to to Lemos by decision, which is uh, not bad considering Marina Rodriguez, who's like second or third fight on this main card for this fight. Marina got knocked out by Lemos. 
and, and this girl survived Limo. So that's showing you the level of Mizuki. Not only how did she how toughness tough, and, and, and she puts pressure. It's not easy to time her, and she goes forward with combinations, uh, head movement, like Lousy said, and like we said, uh, decision or a split decision only loss. So close fight with Janda Roba for the championship in Invicta. So we're talking about a, a person who's got skills, and we're looking at Hannah Goldie. And uh, one word comes to mind, and that would be slow. Slow. Very slow. Very slow. Like, you want to talk about, you see a tank roll, slower than that. Yeah. You know? (laughs) So, basically, Hannah Goldie, you know, even though she did okay outside the UFC, in the UFC, you know, she has one win, and then after that, got three losses and one win. So, uh, after her initial win, she's lost three out of four. Uh, and the only person who who she beat, she submitted her, Emily Whitmire, and four other people submitted Emily Whitmire. I think in the first or second round. Yeah. Uh, so Whitmire doesn't belong here. It's like a Hannah Goldie or, doesn't belong. Here. Winner, she's out of the UFC type thing. Right. This is and so you could just see Hannah Goldie. She doesn't throw. Yeah. She just doesn't throw. She's a grappler that's strong. She, she she's gonna try to like gra- grab and hold on to or take take her down. But she's so slow. And Mizuki, I would say, is pretty fast. Legitimately yep. fast. She's pretty fast. She's and she's confident. She has those angles. Yeah, so. man. So we're talking about a, a fighter who we think is slow, not confident enough to throw really almost any significant strikes. Uh, and this is a this is one of those prelim phenomenal mismatches for us, where we like Mizuki, even though she's minus two two fifty with a three year layoff. She did tear her ACL three years ago. Minus two fifty, we still feel is a steal. I would say lousy yeah. steal. Yeah, steal. And so yeah, that's our pick is Mizuki Inui. She's minus two fifty, two hundred fifty dollars to make a hundred. But we feel it's just one of those beautiful, beautiful matchups for her. She's fast. Hannah Goldie is slow, and Hannah Goldie doesn't throw. And Mizuki throws with combinations, purpose. She doesn't throw with a lot of power, but a lot of punches. She'll throw a volume. lot. Volume. Volume. Boom. There it is. So that's our pick, Mizuki. Mizuki for the win. Thank you for listening. Welcome. We've been drinking MMA. This is uh, the th- third fight on the prelims for the uh, UFC Fight Night. Call it, I mean, um, Gamrot versus uh, Fiziev. So this is uh, Jake Collier, heavyweight fight versus uh, Muhammad Usman. And my pick tentatively is Muhammad Usman. And my pick is, uh, in, like, I'm not going to put any money on it because this is not the fight to put any money on because you never know with how this fight's going to go, but it's going to be inside distance. Um, Jake Callier comes forward. He has combos. Um, Mo Uzman, he's a, more of an athlete than a fighter, in my opinion. Um, but he has those looping strikes that can catch a chin. Um, and on his last fight versus Justin Taffa, was it Justin or Junior? Junior. Junior Taffa. Um, he turned to a wrestler. Muhammad and Usman, yeah. one of the most boring fights in UFC history. Um, but he won. He literally held him against the cage for three rounds, and then I don't even know if the takedown happened. Maybe it happened for a little he bit. He took him down. A little bit. And then he laid on top of him. <laughs> 15 minutes. 15 straight minutes of that, and it was like, wow. Wow. Well, I think this is going to be a different type of fight. Um, uh, Jake Callier is going to come in with a different mentality. I think it's a winner to be out of the UFC type mentality so he's going to come forward and he's going to stay stay coming forward so um his gas tank is not the best because he's a big man yeah and he used to be a small guy and went now he's a big guy so <laughs> he used to be a 185er wow he's huge and he's a and he has to make way for 265 wow you know? he actually has to cut wow so, yeah well have you have you looked at him he's a big boy pudgy guy big guy big yeah. guy he does throw combinations yeah yeah and he stays keeping forward. He loves the, the combos. And you never know. It's a UFC, and they're big guys. Yeah. One just takes one punch with the heavyweights. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, so my pick is inside the distance. I mean, it, it's a close fight on the odds. It's basically a pick em. Uh Muhammad Usman is a slightly favorite, minus 150, $150 to make 100 So very, very close on the odds. And uh, Collier, slight underdog, hundred dollars to make one hundred twenty-five. So it's basically a pick 'em, and that's why I feel like I don't want to put money either, bro. Like all I really want to do is look at the first round, look at how Usman is he fast enough? Is he is he is he keeping the distance smart, or is he wanting to brawl? Because if sometimes a guy like Collier he puts that much pressure, all of a sudden you say screw it, 
I'm sick of trying to run. Let's just go ahead and bite down on the mouthpiece, sit down on my punches, and see if we can trade. And then all of a sudden, the, the second or third strike of Collier hits you while you're loading up. Yeah. And that, that that's one of those things that can happen when you think you're so much better. He might be underestimating, you know, that type of stuff against Collier. He might be underestimating Collier. And it's just one of those fights where Collier is going to be throwing a lot of strikes. Usman doesn't throw a lot of strikes. So Usman either probably gets the knockout counterpunch or he doesn't, and Collier just kind of keeps backing him up, and it yeah. could be a boring decision. Obviously, Usman can switch to wrestling and, and, and hold him against the cage and do things like that. But like we're saying, if Collier put so much pressure, it's not always easy to just get takedowns against a guy who's putting that much pressure. Yeah. For a heavyweight, it's a lot of pressure. You know, it's not typical for a heavyweight. Like like Lazzy said, he came up for 185, so he's got the mentality of a dog of wanting to come forward, and he's not afraid to to really go forward because he knows he's got good fo- uh, faster footwork than most heavyweights. So it's confidence is a big thing in the heavyweight division, right? So I want to we want to wait for the first round definitely, and then possibly in the you know see how Usman is dealing with you know is he fast enough? Is he keeping the distance? Is he is he getting the timing down with uh, you know getting out of the way and throwing counters? If not, I just let the fight go. And the gas tank too. Gas tank's a big thing. In this fight, yeah. Again, we're talking about the pressure of Collier. You don't know how Muhammad Usman. You don't know how anyone really can handle that type of pressure sometimes. So it's like, eh, it's close on the odds. I'm just gonna wait, see what happens in the first round. No shame in saying that. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, gut reaction inside the distance. Inside the distance, someone gets finished. So much yeah. pressure. Someone's gonna get knocked out. Yeah, for sure. So, thanks for listening, guys. Wait till the next fight. Welcome, we've been drinking. Uh, this is the fourth fight on the prelims for the fight night of Gamrot versus Fiziev. Uh, this is uh, fourth fight on prelim is Jacob Malkoon at middleweight versus uh, Cody Brundage. And my pick is going to be it, uh, Jacob Malkoon is minus 550 at this point, $550 to make 100 But he's still my pick, even though he's very pricey. Uh, I just feel like he's... Uh, Got the uh, better striking. Uh, he's got more takedowns per fight than Cody Brundage. And, uh, yeah, just overall better fighter. What about you, Lazzy? Um, I think it's going to go to distance. Okay. Um, I, I don't think this is going to be a striking match at all. This is going to be a wrestle-grapple fest. Makes sense. Um, so even though Brundage is actually – he has powerful takedowns, like double legs yeah. you. It has that around-the-corner type. Picks you up with the double – like. To get actually gets his hands around you, lifts you up, and then turns the corner so yeah. you're not against the cage type 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 takedowns. Um, but Malcoon's with his pressure. That's all he does is take that people down. Yeah. What it's so, like eight <laughs> eight takedowns a fight. Eight takedowns a fight. So unbelievable uh, uh, takedown uh, average. And yeah. also Brundage has some power, so you want it, I could totally see what you're saying, Malcoon by distance. Yeah, uh, I think Brundage his last three fights he got knocked out. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Uh, he has been uh, – he lost his last three fights last in a row. Last three fights. A decision, unanimous decision to Dumas, and he got submitted in the second round by Vieira, and then he got knocked out by Oleg Sajak in the first round. Oh, uh, Walter White. Walter White, yeah, our, right. our, our man who's solving solving uh, chemistry problems yeah, while, right. while he uh, fights, you know. <laughs> Great fighter awesome. from Poland, like a KO guy. <laughs> And it was, Brundage did take that fight on like you know short notice. I think it was a month or even two weeks. But regardless, he did get knocked out, and he's going three three fight losing streak. Whereas you look at Malcoon, Malcoon, he did get knocked out in his first fight versus Phil Hawes, uh, who people you know people know Phil Hawes. You know he's dangerous. And other than that, though, in his last four fights after that first fight in the UFC, he's three and one. And he, all decisions, all decisions, and his only losses to Brendan Allen, who's a top ten fighter. And Allen finishes people, and the fact that he was able to go the distance with Allen, Allen means a lot two fights ago. So Allen's peaking, and he fought a primed Allen, and he did okay. He only lost by decision rather than getting finished. Not bad. Yep. So. Uh, we're looking at the takedown average. He's got a higher strike count landed, 3.7 versus only 1.8 this is for not Brundage. Be a strike fest at no, all. No, no. Yeah, it's gonna. It's I not think, gonna be a fist fight. I think lousy or like not lousy. It, it, lousy's right. Yeah, it's like sloppy wrestling, back and forth type stuff. Be, more strikes landed by Malcoon. Probably a boring fight. Yeah, Malcoon, you know, gets a few more strikes in Brundage per round. A lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling. You know. Jab, jab, <laughs> fake hook, yep. uh, then and then go for a shoot. That yep. might be for both fighters actually. Yeah. Yeah, Brundage might be loading up a little bit more on his big uh, overhands to keep the distance and stuff like that, but Malcoon will read it, and Malcoon has the, you know, just the the better record. The better fight IQ as better well. Better fight IQ, man. Uh, Br- Brundage uh, against, uh, who was it, Dumas. Yeah. He kept on pulling guard and trying to go for guillotine. He did wow. it a couple times. Yeah. And then he Dumas, 
Dumas just waited it out, and he was able to get on top, and that's how you that's how you won the decision because he right. control time lost by decision. Yeah, just literally just let the other guy just be on him for that long. Can't win a fight. So third fight. I mean, this is a dangerous fight. Maybe Brundage four fights in a row. This could be his last opportunity. That, but that might. Excuse me. That might be true. But this. I mean, Malcoon's a horrible matchup, right? It's, he's better the same at everything. Fighter. Literally same fighter, but just better at everything, and younger. Yeah. <laughs> so, Malcoon's the pick, and I think Malcoon by decision. And so, if there's a good price for Malcoon by decision, Malcoon by decision, that's, like a good, that. that's a good point. If it goes the di- a distance bet, if that's a good price, whatever the good price is, you know, Malcoon yeah. by decision, if that's really good, I'm going for that. Yeah, I like it. Let's wait till the next fight. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the We've Been Drinking MMA podcast. We are talking about Tim Means, Andre F- Vialfo. Am I saying? Yeah, F- Fialo. Um, It'd be Vialo. Yeah. I'm going Portugal, uh, from Portugal. Met- method of victory. Is going to be KO. Nice. If you just look at the last, what is it? Let's say eleven fights of oh my Yalo, god, they're all been either losses by KO or wins by KO. Yeah. So I don't think this is going to be any difference because Tim Means like to put some at least at least when he's striking likes to come forward. He is a pressure fighter for sure. Um, he likes that dirty boxing. He yeah. likes the clinch. He likes that that type of stuff. Uh, and f- 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 yeah. Vialo, um, Andre. How about Andre? That that works for me. Yep. Andre, uh, he doesn't mind getting punched because he has that p- type of power. So Tim Means gonna come forward the dirty boxing. Either he's gonna clip him. Yeah. Uh, I think Andre's gonna get him, get him, get him out of there. It might be a first round. I'm not gonna pick a fighter, but like it might be a first round uh, like type knockout. Just with a style situation. matchup. Vialo is clean counters and Tim Means is dirty fighting. So, yeah, for me, uh, my pick is Tim Means. He's 39 years old, though, and Fialo is 29. You know, it makes a difference. You know, it could be it could be the difference maker here, too. But uh, both of them got the same reach. Uh, they're both coming off of three losses in a row. But, um, yeah, we said Fialo got knocked out in his last three fights, but he fought killers like Buckley and Salikov. We saw Sal. I mean, we know Salikov. And Jake Matthews, like all name fighters, so it's not like he's getting KO'd by nobodies. And then Tim Means got submitted by Alex Morano, another name fighter in the second round. He got a split decision loss to Max Griffin. Max Griffin's, you know, solid. And then submitted by the great Kevin Holland. Uh, and then he, uh, their last wins, I mean, Fialo had a clean knockout counter in that the was first a round. Violent knockout with Van Camp. Van Camp. Uh, and then who else? Beza, Miguel Beza, which we, we had a lot of respect yeah, for Miguel Beza. Of- Technical brawler, and he KO'd him in the first round. Uh, yeah, he's got a lot of good, decent wins, man. And, uh, yeah, lost to Michelle Perea, which we all know is the dancer fighter, flipping and everything like that. Capoeira. No, yeah, man, great fighter. I would say great fighter. And uh, people that means beat four fights ago, Nicholas Dalby, respect for him. Dalby's a really good fighter. Perry, Mike Perry. You know, so. Bare knuckle mm-hmm. champ himself. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we got some decent records, man. They, they were both doing good until they went on this three fight losing streak each so it's kind of one of those fights where it's kind of maybe like loser goes home type thing you know yes. like lo- loser gets knocked out of the ufc tim means is 39 like we said alfialo is 20 29 10 year age difference uh for me i'm just going with means I-, I i like that lousy pick though with like the the ko look at fialo and it's just it's just been happening and he is a killer be killed guy look at look at his last five fights all ko's either he wins by ko or loses by ko it's hard to imagine Tim Means KOing Fialo. It could happen. Uh, if, if, if Fialo, like, is... He feeling, doesn't mind getting hit. Yeah, what if, like, Tim Means just throws a random head kick at the end of a three-punch combination and yeah. it lands or some shit? You never quite know. It's hard to know how this is going to go. I feel like Andre Fialo keeps good distance um, most of the time. Um, I, I, I don't... He, he's got the clean counters, but, he do, but Tim Means is, like, active as far as he throws a lot. So, you know, he opens him up, himself up for getting countering, too. So it's kind of a dangerous 100%, fight. 100%, especially early on in that Murano fight. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a first-round knockout, but how, how hard uh, Murano was throwing because <laughs> means uh, just leaves himself open. Yeah, yeah. So yep. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a knockout, but I just I can't pick a fighter. Yeah, I, I just I like I like Tim Means his his activity pressure fighting. 
these are types of fighters that can really, you know, put pressure on and throw those combinations and make it hard. You know, and he doesn't walk into punches too much, you know, too bad, but he does leave himself open. When you throw that many punches in a row, uh, it, it's kind of dangerous. But one thing I did notice about Fiello is that he wasn't blocking the head kick from Buckley too too much. Like, he kind of had good distance, but the one thing he wasn't really blocking, it's something that he could correct easily in this fight. I'm sure he, he will, but it's just one thing that I noticed that Tim Means can throw a head kick. That's something that could happen um, just, to, just to add to his combinations. But, yeah, man, uh, I, I just like Tim Means' uh, dirty style, man, going forward, throwing lots of punches landing some missing some and he wants to know. be there so. yeah he, he fights with a lot of force even 39 years old but he still fights like he is uh got something to lose so almost his 50th fight nothing to lose sorry yeah my god he's hot yeah this is crazy 32 15 and 1 is, is his record almost 50 fights yeah. so i'm excited for this fight because both of them have a lot to prove with the three 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 losses in a row for each of them and I, i'm just i'm just i'm really hoping for a great fight i'm actually really looking for this fight as, as one of the fight of the nights or or at least for the prelims anyway it's gonna be an entertaining fight yep thanks for listening guys appreciate it welcome to we've been drinking mma podcast we are talking about the miles johns dan argueta fight i'm going uh inside distance and i think Miles johns actually gets a knockout in this fight and for me uh i like argueta's grappling i like how he's getting better from fight to fight it's a close fight it's minus 170 for argueta slight favorite 170 to make 100 and i'm just going argueta um should be probably by decision but i'm just gonna say argueta money line because he's relatively cheap uh i just feel like he's got the pressure really yeah miles johns has like the better striking i mean he has striking in general argueta doesn't strike (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he he's, throws, but it's not his, really. Uh, his striking is more there so he can uh, set up a takedown. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's what he does is just go for takedowns, relentless with it. I just think Argueta is, has been – he's had only three fights in the UFC. One of them is a decision loss, his first fight to Damon Jackson. He, he decision uh, beat Aguirre, Nick Aguirre, and then he no-contested Ronnie Lawrence, which was one of those things actually we saw this weekend where he had a sub, and then the other guy said, oh, I didn't tap. It's like, but I saw you do something like with like two things. It wasn't in in the same spot, but he tapped one on on one, you know, place, and then he tapped second like right away on somewhere else. And he's like, oh, I didn't tap. It was kind of a weird situation. Inside, inside leg, and then outside yes, the leg. Yes, exactly. It was weird. But uh, Miles um, John is coming off. Let's see. He's been in the UFC for a long time. Actually, he's been around for four years. He's uh, like six and two. Uh, he's got some KOs. You know, he he's, he he can be a dangerous fighter here got really good leg kicks i would say um i just feel like the pressure that argueta can put is something that miles is uh miles i think is better when he pressures you know what i mean but like he's not like a clean counter puncher type guy he's mm-hmm. a guy with good you know he, he's he's tough he's uh got good power type guy and i just feel like argueta just because he's getting better from fight to fight and he can when you smother miles then it's harder to throw the leg kicks yeah. Right, you know, it's like anytime you smother somebody, it's just harder to do what you want to do, and that's the only reason I'm really going with Argueta. Is I I saw Miles get taken down a little bit, I think, and I just like Argueta looks to be that style. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't know. That's what I'm assuming that Argueta is improving enough to kind of kind of put the pressure, throw the fake punches, and just get the takedowns. And well, if he does take him know. down, it's gonna be it's gonna be a problem for him because he yeah. can submit people, even though he, can, he hasn't done he hasn't done in the UFC. Yeah, but in the like uh this, yeah a lot like of this strike force type stuff like not strike force but lfa, LFA. Or in, yep. and he has uh four submitted subs. people yeah four subs and two ko's in that so um, not bad but he's nine he, and one it, but if he tries to stand and strike with him <laughs> it's gonna be yeah it's, it's a knockout yeah. it's gonna be a knockout for yeah. sure but i kind of like so you were saying inside the distance yeah inside the distance and i, I personally think miles john is gonna KO. knock him off yeah but like inside the distance, just in case a sub happens or something just weird. in case like argueta gets the back right right right, right. Um, just in case something weird happens but i, I don't think that's gonna happen because no. i think miles john is a wrestler himself but mm-hmm. that turn into a striker right but um yeah, Miles Johns for the win, in my opinion. But, like, I think inside distance, if you are going to bet this. Yeah, it's another fight where, you know, uh, we there's some other fights, you know, the first couple fights that I really like on the prelim. This is the last fight on the prelim, and this is just – you know, it's it's a it's kind of it's almost a toss up fight as far as the odds again. Um, Fighters on the come up. Yeah, 
So, yeah, going with Argueta allows he's going with Miles Johns. Uh, he's thinking by KO. I'm just thinking, who knows, so I'm just doing Argueta money line. And we'll see what happens. Uh, not sure if I'm going to add it to the parlay or not, but it's just one of those fights, you know. Uh, should be a good one just because both of them are kind of, um, you know, good records. 13-2 and two for Mike Johns and 9-1 and one for Argueta. So it's, a, it's you know, it's going to be an interesting fight just because they're winners. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. Um, Hey, guys, let us know if you want us to, us to keep doing these prelims. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we're doing the whole card. Yep. Like, every single fight on the card. Um, it's our pleasure. It's fun. Yeah, it's actually kind of neat. Uh, there's some fights where, like, there's zero chance this fighter is going to lose. <laughs> and uh, so it's I, it's actually kind of cool because you, there's some ways to win us some actual money here. So let yeah, us know if you yeah. want us to uh, keep doing it. So. Thanks, everybody. Uh, main card. First fight on the main card for the uh, USC Fight Night Gamrot versus Fiziev. First fight on the main card. It's Ricardo Ramos fighting Charles Jordan at featherweight. 145 pounds. And I'm going. My pick is back in. My pick is Charles Jordan. Uh, my pick is Charles Jordan as well. Um, Let's go. Minus 150. 150 to make 100. That's actually good value. I love this price. Yeah. You know, some people might say, oh, it's 50-50 and Jordan's a little bit too expensive. I'm like, nope. <laughs> this is sweet. I actually sweet. think this is not Ramos's like, weight. The, he should move up a level because oh. he, he, he tries to cut. In his last fight, yeah. he missed weight by nine pounds. My goodness. They had to scrap the fight against Jared Gordon. How old is this guy? He's 28 and he's missing weight by nine pounds? Nine pounds. At the age of 28? Nine pounds. Nine times? Nine. Nine times. Yeah, Ferris Bueller. I'm sorry. That, that's like Bad joke. Uh, Bad, jo- <laughs> Bad joke. But seriously, nine pounds, that's ridiculous. For I mean, you can't, you can't, it's like another weight class. You yeah. Can't, you can't fight that guy. It's literally another weight class. Yeah. Nine pounds up is 154, which is literally making 155. Yeah. Whatever, one pound away, whatever. It's crazy. But like, um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's messed up. But like, so if you move to up to 155, um, that probably be better for him. Uh, Ramos has the weird Caparero striking, like kind of like Michael Porreo type fight fighter. Yeah, um, kicks a lot of yeah, kicks. Yeah, he has KO power. He showed that against <laughs> Danny Chavez in his, la- in his last fight. Yeah, if somebody runs into a freaking runs into his hand somehow, he might knock yeah. you out or something. <laughs> I think oh, the spinning elbow you're talking about. The yeah. spinning elbow one? Yeah, he yeah. I mean, some ridiculous knockout, like a spinning elbow against a guy I mean, who's yeah, coming that's forward. A, that's a style, though. That it is a style. That's spinning, true. That's I'm not going to say it's not skillful. Kick. It was skillful, but I'm just saying it's like if someone's coming at you, all you got to do is, you know, oh, duck, uh, spinning elbow. Yeah. It's like good knockout, but it's it's not happening versus Jordan. No. It's just With not. With his ex- expertise, expertise um, yeah. Um, I, uh, he has. Fa- I think he has faster hands than uh, Ramos in general. God, yes, uh, Ramos. I don't feel like Ramos doesn't even really like to throw hands. He just does it yeah. to keep you off him. He likes he, to throw kicks, really, and he loads yeah, up on him. He wants to keep the range, so he does those kicks, and he, he does he keep the range. Dances around. That's exactly him. Um, Keeps the range. The Jordan also does combos with his hands. Hell so yeah, combos. If somehow Three, four punches. Uh, Ramos actually gets him on his back, which I don't think he's gonna wrestle Ramos in general. Yeah, but like. Uh, Jordan is active on his back, so he's not going to stay there. Listen, we saw Jordan get off off the ground versus Gracie, an absolute you know yeah. legend of uh, legend legendary family. The name. Yeah, the name and, and and what he's done in jujitsu too, and and what he's even done in the UFC. It's like he's he's dangerous on the ground, and Jordan's like, nope, I'm just going to get up. Yeah. And 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 Ramos is not even close to a grappler as uh, uh, Gracie. Yeah, it's, uh, like Ramos does have two takedowns a fight, but like his takedowns are not like clean wrestling takedowns. It's like body lock, body lock, body take, lock. trip. Yeah, and Jordan already proved he can he can handle that against a Gracie, yeah. you know, who's a world champion in jiu-jitsu black belt. Top so, tier. Top tier. When you when you think of uh, jiu-jitsu and, and grappling, you think of the Gracie family in general. 100%. 100%. And Ramos is not a Gracie. So. No, no. So Ramos loads up on his kicks. Easy and to see coming. Telegraph. Yeah, and Jordan, when he's on his game... He can easily evade leg kicks. So head kicks, no problem, because he's Ramos is loading up. Jordan's going to have no problem, in my opinion. Ramos does not throw with almost, I would say, almost any power on his punches. It's not enough to keep a guy like Jordan off you. Yeah. So Jordan can go in and out quickly, like jump out, back out really quickly. When he goes forward, he throws three, four punch combinations with uppercuts. Com- uh, what do you got? Confident. He has power. Um, you know, he's... Um, you know, he 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 is a volume puncher, but he but he throws with some heat, and consistently. 
He throws round with after intention. Round. Throws with intentions, round after round. Um, like we said, I think he's good defense. He gets the high guard up at the right times against guys who are competent strikers. I don't think Ramos is a competent puncher. He's a competent kicker, but not a puncher. And so Jordan's going to be easily blocking the punches if Ramos can even connect with some punches. No problems. I think Jordan wins this fight with his boxing Unanimous. easily. Unanimous easily. And I think that uh, the kicks easily gets out of the way of those. Body lock, no problem getting out of those, even if, if Ramos can get them. Jordan's actually relatively fast, I would say. I would, I would, I would consider Ramos – I'm sorry, I would consider Jordan a pretty fast fighter. Ramos also, to get the body lock, Ramos stands really far away. So to get a body lock against a guy like Jordan, you're going to need Jordan to make a huge, huge mess up of going too close to Ramos. But Jordan is smart with the punches, the combinations, knows when to kind of get out of the way. Jordan is just kind of a beast, kind of. He, does, he doesn't knock everyone out, but he, he throws these volume combinations and he lands and he can kind of hurt you and just keep sting you enough. This well, is a, let's not talk about lock. Well, right now, I mean, there's so much potential, but I, we love this fight. Yeah, the, I'm just going to say that. Yeah, We're definitely the, putting money on this. This is a one-sided fight. It's a one-sided fight. It feels like that because if you can't keep Jordan off you with your own punches, you're screwed. Yeah. If you if you don't throw enough leg kicks, you're screwed. Ramos throws some leg kicks, but he loads up on them. Jordan, we said, can get out of the way of people who who don't tele- load up on the leg kicks. Some guy who's throwing who's loading up easily gets out of the way. Ramos really only has the kicks. It's, it, it's not a contest in our opinion. So yeah. we love this fight. We love Jordan in this fight. Minus one one fifty. We think it's a steal. Yeah, the mo- money line. Uh, yeah, this is the value. Absolutely, one hundred fifty to make a hundred on Charles Jordan. That's our pick. Both of our picks. Welcome to We've Been Drinking MMA Podcast. We are talking about the Brian Battle AJ Fletcher fight. I am going Brian Battle. Um, Brian Battle is a long, rangy kickboxer. Um, even if uh, AJ brings it to the ground, um, Brian Battle has those long, rangy legs with those long arms. He can get subs. Um, minus one seventy. Like, minus one seventy. I like him too. Brian Battle. Yeah, minus one hundred seventy to make a hundred. I'm picking Battle too. Yeah, th- that's a. This is a good fight for uh, people that love parlays. So I like Brian Battle. In a parlay. Simple, right? You just yeah. battle money line. Yeah. No. No getting fancy it's, about yeah. how it's going to happen. Just yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, AJ cool. Fletcher is more of a uh, he's strong. He's a wrestler. Yeah. Um, Good athlete yeah. in the first round. I believe you said that he has gas tank issues. I feel like in his last fight you could see – not in his last fight. He got a sub. He he won by sub. But against Ang, Ang, Angel, Angelusa. Uh, or Ang Lusa. Lusa's a really good fight. I would say he's a really good fight. Yeah. But regardless, it's not. that's not the point. The point is is that in the first round, it was relatively competitive. Lusa won the first round, but it was competitive. And in the second round, you know, Fletcher was keeping distance, manipulating distance smartly, coming in and out of range, you know, throwing decent combinations. You know, jab wasn't as good. Punches weren't quite up to, up to par with Lusa, and we know Lusa's really good by his last fight last weekend, you know, how good he really is. But Fletcher in the second round... He wasn't keeping that distance in the second or third round. He started going right up to him. Thing is, like like Lousy always says, if you go in to somebody's range and you don't throw and you're waiting on them, that's what Fletcher was doing, man. He started getting bloody. His nose was bloody. Yeah, you're going to get knocked out. You're going to get knocked out. And I'm actually surprised he didn't get knocked out. But the point is, is that second and third round, he got bloodied on his face. And he was doing it to himself. He was just, like, coming in, like, close, but he wasn't throwing, waiting for some uh, – and then Lucid would throw – smack him and then Fletcher would try and counter and it was too late and all of a sudden his head movement wasn't there like it was in the first round so what I'm saying is as the fight goes on Fletcher is suspect his gas tank is suspect his IQ is suspect you look at battle if you just look at records records you think AJ Fletcher is going to be like okay yeah 10 and 2 okay 10 and 2 yeah let's go but when you actually like dissect it yes this is Brian Battle's fight to win shit Brian Battle's 10 and 2 as well and he's an ultimate ultimate fighter champion ultimate fighter champ He's fought. He fought. Uh, the he won t- all fifteen against Renat. He's was, twenty-one and one. Yeah, huge record. He even submitted Kevin Lee in one minute. Yeah. And Kevin Lee, we got respect for him, even though he's now he's retired. So and battle went the distance with him. Yeah. So it's just like the range and the kickboxing. It's gonna be a fun fight to watch for me to put on a parlay. And it's fun, man. Just, battle has a 10, 10 inch reach advantage. It's going to be great. This is ridiculous. So we're talking about a guy like Fletcher who comes in. First round, he's pretty good. Brian Brian Battle, in my Fletcher doesn't throw enough, in my opinion, compared to Brian Battle. Battle throws a lot of leg kicks, a lot of kicks yeah. in general. 
Because he can. He can, and he's got the distance, so he's like, I'll throw kicks. And I, what I love about Battle is he's active. He throws a lot of kicks. And when you come in too close, he can knock you out if yeah. you come too close. So if Fletcher comes too close, you get knocked out. If Fletcher wants to keep distance and just come in, you know, manipulate range a little bit in the first round, Battle will still kick you a lot. Fletcher is good, but he doesn't throw enough. Against a guy like Battle, how are you going to overcome a 10-inch reach, 10 inch reach disadvantage if you're not throwing enough? It's just really difficult. And especially when he's keeping that battles, keeping that range, because this, yeah. this guy's a wrestler, so he's going to want to close the range. But when he's mm-hmm. kicking that much, maybe it's a bad thing that he's kicking mm-hmm. if he's a wrestler. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he can close a lot faster or That's catch, true. catch a kick or right. whatever, you know? But, like, I don't – battle battle actually stays active on the back. He's looking for subs as well. But he, he gets up. Yeah, I still think battle, like, even though he's active with the kicks – he 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 still picks his spots well. He's just unafraid for some. I think he's just got that will in him, and so like he'll wait for you to do something like okay, you pause here, he'll kick you. It's not like he's just chucking leg kicks at at people. No, he yeah, he's he, not button mashing. Yeah, he's yeah. not button mashing. Video game analogy. Yeah, it's so yeah. And you said he gets gets up off the ground, good on the ground. He's got two subs in his last six fights and two KOs in his last six fights. He's five and one in his last six. Um, with a decision loss to the 21 and one. Uh, Look at his last fight. Ferret it was a dinner. 14 second knockout. Yeah, literally. I mean, regardless of it, whether game, uh, Gabe Green went forward on him a little too much pressure. Fact is, is that Brian Battle Brian Battle knows how to time you in 14 a seconds. 14 seconds, man. Got right next to him, and Fletcher got right next to uh, Lusa, and Lusa didn't finish him. But I feel like Battle can. Finish. That's why I, we're going. I think that's why we're both saying Battle by money line, just bat, Battle in general. Battle's going to win this fight. He's going to win. Yeah. Appreciate the listening, guys. Going with Brian Battle. Minus 170, 170 to make 100. Appreciate the listening, guys. We are talking about the Michelle Watterson Gomez versus Maria Rodriguez fight. Um, she will forever be known as Michelle Watterson. I don't care if she gets married like 19 times. <laughs> I mean, she has like 19 like hyphens. She will Karate. always be known as Michelle Watterson. Karate hottie. That's right. Michelle Watterson. Um, by the way, my pick is Marina Rodriguez, money line. Um, this this fight is just 2.0. Point oh. It's going to be the same fight. They just fought three fights ago. Yeah, it's just going to be the same fight. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, is she going to learn that much Like, to to do something differently in this fight? I don't think so. I think Marina's going to do the same thing she did before. Yeah. So, yeah. Punch kicks, uh, take down the fence. Yeah, good the take down. The, the only way Watterson Solid, wins decent. this fight is by uh, the wrestling. And she does have wrestling, but like she she's going to need to like pressure with that yeah. wrestling. Always, always consistently with the pressure and the wrestling in this fight for her to win this fight. So I don't see that happening. I think Marina is going to keep her at distance with her striking. And I think this is, gonna, this is a wrap for for with, with this uh, duel. Yep, I got. I'm picking uh, Marina Rodriguez as well. She's minus three hundred, three hundred dollars to make a hundred. They just fought three fights ago, and Marina Rodriguez won. Two of the judges' scorecards was forty nine, forty six. That it's four rounds to one. Um, so they just this have. It's only three rounds. It's a three round fight, so it, it could be a little bit, you know, closer, et cetera. And that's maybe why it's minus three hundred instead of maybe minus five hundred if it was a five round fight. More chances for the better fighter to win, but. Um, I feel the same way. Uh, you know, Marina Rodriguez it can kick and punch very well. She's been top five for a while. And Michelle is not top five. She's like number 10 or even number 11 at this point um, in her career. And Michelle Watterson goes for kicks. Her punches, again, she doesn't really throw with any really heat on them. So Marina's not going to worry about the punches. So it's really a Michelle, the kick, Michelle Watterson, the kicker, versus Marina Rodriguez, the complete striker, the puncher and kicker. On top of all that, uh, Michelle doesn't throw with really with many feints because again she throws kicks. It's hard to feint kicks, you know what I mean? Unless you're Izzy, who like you know do the little hip, hip little hezzies, you know. And she doesn't do that. So uh, Marina's gonna read the kicks well, like she did last time. And Marina, the thing about her is, is that she's got great defense as far as striking defense. You know, wrestling, like Lousy said, that is the one X factor. If Michelle Watterson somehow comes up with a game plan of like I'm gonna pressure and I'm gonna go for takedowns no matter what. You know, that, that could be a bit of a problem. However, Michelle, in my opinion, Michelle Watterson stands too far away. And she's not a natural-born wrestler, so for her to put pressure, she's going to have to get closer. When you get closer, you could get clipped. 
And I think when Marina sees Mar- – Marina's really good at keeping distance the way Michelle is, except Marina keeps the distance and also knows how to throw punches and land some pretty heavy strikes of uh, punches. So – the distance control, Michelle stands a little bit farther, but Marina knows how to manipulate the distance a little bit better and have the defense so she can counter and throw back, whereas Michelle just stands super far away and just kind of like, you know, runs in like two steps and goes for a kick. And, you know, Marina, it's, it's very repetitive with Michelle. So anyways, Marina, um, she's going to have the defense. She's, she's good at blocking punches and kicks. Really great body body kicks, anything. She's good at, with her hand hand placement for, for defense. So Michelle shouldn't really be landing anything. And then when Marina wants to throw punches, it's going to make Michelle scared of the punches. And this is what's going to happen, just like last fight. Marina's going to start fainting now. Fake punches. Fainting with the punches. Fainting, fainting. And then Michelle's going to, like, you know, bite on it. And then Michelle Marina then throws a leg kick and lands. So it's going to be, like a lot of volume landed for Marina, even though Marina doesn't throw a lot of volume, it's going to land all the time because Michelle is going to be scared. Like, is it a punch or a kick? I don't know. I can only kick. So it's kind of one of those fights where it's a, I think it's a great, great chance to make some money on Marina Rodriguez money line. Yep. Um, We don't need to say like, this is going to go the distance. This is going to go the distance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But like that, that type of line is going to be ridiculous. The props aren't out yet, so we can't look at them. Right. But like, it's going to be ridiculous because every fight seems with with uh, Michelle Watterson seems to be a decision. Right. So um, It's like eight decisions in her last nine fights or something like that. Ridiculous amount of decisions, either losing or winning. But, like, Marina's <laughs> going to win this fight, and that's my pick. Exactly. Marina, too, a lot of decisions, like eight out of her last 11 or something. It's crazy. So a lot. it's going to be probably too expensive to bet decision. So just, you know, we're going Marina Rodriguez money line. She'll win we've been drinking this is the co-main event this is bryce mitchell versus dan ige at featherweight 145 pounds my pick is going to be bryce mitchell my pick is bryce mitchell as well uh do you yeah i'll I'll, I'll start yeah um bryce mitchell is we don't need to say that he's a wrestler he's kind of my guy he's been my guy since barbosa and that would be a etched in my brain like as awesome as it gets for like a fight in general. Yeah. Um, he knocked him down. Thug nasty. <laughs> thug he nasty. Thug nasty. Him. He raps. He turned. He turned himself into a verb. Actually, you know what? Thug nasty was on our first podcast ever. Yeah. Remember that? It was about like nine, ten months ago, brilliant. like last November. That's crazy. He got. He lost to Topuria. Yeah. But he was our pick, and he's our guy, dude. He was. He's he was, always been our guy. Yeah, yeah. It puts the pressure. Doesn't have a lot of power on the hands, but he did knock down Edson Barboza two fights ago. We were high on him. We still kind of are high on him, and he just he puts the pressure. He 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 knows how to throw some punches at fake punches and go for takedowns. He just doesn't stop with the pressure with the wrestling. Yeah. Um, for Ige, um, his key to victory is takedown defense. If he's able to stifle at least at least some of these uh, takedowns and use his uh, power and hand speed, he he's gonna have a chance in this. But if he if he yeah. can't stop it, it's going to be a huge, huge problem because that's all Bryce Mitchell does is the pressure and the wrestling. Yeah, it's basically that. If Mitchell can't get the takedown, then Ige wins if if uh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> are we still talking? Uh, what are we talking for? <laughs> Mitchell is minus 190, 190 to make 100. You know, he's got a slightly better ranking. He's beaten slightly better guys. But Ige's, Ige, Ige's you know, he's a good striker, man. And But the problem is about three fights ago he fought Evloev. Um, Movskar Evloev and it wasn't I mean Evloev's a really good wrestler talented fighter obviously a guy who's in the top five I think now but it's not the fact that Ige lost it's it's the way that he got taken down a little too easily without putting up much of a fight and it's one of those things where it's like if you don't have that fight to try and fight off the wrists you know just have some will against it head plays you know standing too close in the second and third rounds you know like Ige likes to in the first round keep the distance the second round he gets a little closer etc if you don't want to keep the distance if you don't want to throw feints and and make sure you're you know uh, stop, you, you stopping the wrestlers. The fight, yeah. yeah, man, against a wrestler, a caliber of Mitchell, not saying Mitchell is Evloev's, Evloev's level, but Mitchell is good. He's a strong grappler. You know, he can take... Aggressive. Guys who, very aggressive. Dude, guys who don't get taken down like like uh, uh, Barbosa, he can take them down. That's a high skill level of, of, of wrestling, man. So Ige doesn't have the, the takedown defense of Edson Barbosa, and he doesn't have the power of Edson Barbosa to keep Mitchell. And by the way, Mitchell knocked down Edson Barbosa. Mitchell really only lost to Topuria, and Topuria is like slated to fight for the title next. Yes. Volkanovski keeps mentioning his name that he's going to probably fight him next if he doesn't move up to fight uh, Topuria is amazing. at 155. So, 
Yeah, Tapiri was amazing, man. Like, kept the distance well, was, like, in and out in range, hitting hard to the body. Like, he was doing so many things right. Then he beat Emmett, who's a top five, perennial top five. So Mitchell lost only to the best. By the way, that so. was a dismantling of a fight. It was. And Mitch, I was so <laughs> rooting for Mitchell because I'm such a Mitch, Bryce Mitchell fan. Yeah. Um, yeah, we like his uh, energy, yeah, his personality. This, so this might be a bias, bias yeah. pick, but I'm still picking Mitchell because of his pressure. Yeah, I mean, Ige, Ige, hey, listen, Ige's a ranked fighter. He's top 10 as well. Mitchell's also ranked. It's just it's just style matchups here, you know? Like, Mitchell doesn't throw with power, even though, obviously, he knocked down Barbosa. But Ige, Ige is just one of those things where it's like, has he improved in, in one year? It's been about one year since the Evloev fight where he got taken down at will. It, has he improved enough? We all, he's only fought two strikers in the last year, so it's all, you know we don't we haven't seen it. He hasn't been tested. But I guess what you're gonna get tested by someone like Bryce Mitchell because Bryce Mitchell that's he's a specialist. That's he's what he in does. your face in your face. He's not he's unafraid and he knows how to keep distance actually really well while still putting pressure, which is a, which is a hard thing to do. But he he showed he can do it against the best like Barbosa. Barbosa's winning even today in the top ten. So Mitchell, Mitchell is is, is still high on our radar, and, and yeah, we're going with Mitchell that he's going to get the the wrestling, the takedowns, and he's got he's got solid top control. And so um, yeah, yeah, going with Mitchell should be interesting first round, obviously, because Ige does have power and he's got good balance in the first. But yeah, going with Mitchell, guys. Welcome. We've been drinking MMA. This is the uh, main event uh, of the fight night. So this is Fiziev, Rafael Fiziev versus Matthias Gamrot. And uh, my pick is going to be Rafael Fiziev to win. I'm going Fizzy as well. Fizzy. Um, Gamrot, he is probably one of the best uh, wrestlers yeah. in the division. Yeah. Maybe in the, I wouldn't say the UFC no, in general. No, no, no. But just like, in this weight class, he's just, ever since Khabib's gone, wait, this is 155. So oh, we're, we're, we're with the cha- other than the champion. Yeah. He's the second best. He's at least one of the best wrestlers in the UFC. Second or third, I don't know. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. That's what he's known for is wrestling, wrestling, pressure, pressure. I'm going Fizzy because uh, ju- just watching the Gaethje Fizzy fight. Yeah. That was a war. War. And he, <laughs> he's ready fight. to fight like that every single time. So if he fights like that against a guy who's not ready for a war. I don't think Gamrot is. Yeah. So I think Fizzy's gonna win. So Fizzy, man, he's um, he's got uh, five significant strikes landed per minute. Gamrot has three. Uh, Gamrot has four takedowns per fight, and Fizzy has zero. So it's a striker versus grappler, basically. Um, Gamrot does have a KO from a while ago against a guy who just ran into his uh, punch, basically. So he he's not gonna KO really many people at all. Um, it, it's striker versus grappler. So in my opinion, Fizzy has fought somebody relatively close. Not exactly. Obviously, Rafael Dos Anjos, he uh, KO'd him in the fifth round, and he's a former champion. Obviously, Dos Anjos is a lot older than he used to be past his prime. However, when you see Matias Gamrot uh, wrestle, right? You saw him against Jalen Turner in his last fight. He got rocked. He got knocked down in the second round. Third, third, third round, he got buckled. But Jalen Turner didn't keep that distance and, and, and keep that distance management. Otherwise, he could have won that fight. So my point is, is that Fiziev uh, has better distance managed than Jalen Turner. Fiziev um, has proven that he can beat the best like Dos Anjos, have a close fight with Justin Gaethje that some people thought, you know, Fiziev at least took the first round and, and Gaethje with the experience got the second and third. But it was still close. Close fight. Good fight. Uh, had a great showing. And uh, and Fiziev has the power, the combinations, the distance control, uh, the body kicks. Listen, Gamera, when he comes forward, his distance manage- management is okay. It's not great, though. His body and his legs are definitely open for kicks, and Fiziev kicks hard, really hard. His body kicks are amazing, super, super loud when he makes contact with your stomach. And He's going to get respect real quick. Real quick, real quick. And, and M- Matias, I think, counts on – people who are getting a little too close and Fiziev you know he used to but now Fiziev in his last few fights he's really that's why he's really turned the corner as far as his ranking um his consistency consistency has gone up he doesn't just go in like a moron and get punched in the face that doesn't happen that was maybe happening in his first two UFC fights now he's keeping the distance smart throwing kicks smartly you know waiting for his opportunity and when he throws he throws heavy heavy punches uh combinations as well and, uh, you know, great jab, all that kind of stuff. 
in my opinion, Gamrot goes for chain wrestling while he'll throw like a fake punch, get close to you, and then you know, and then he'll go for the takedown. But like we said, Fiziev could stop Dos Anjos' takedowns, get up from those. He should be able to be just fine against Gamrot. Fiziev is the better athlete. Fiziev is a better striker all around. Distance control is better. Minus 160, I think, is a good pri- great price. And, uh, Pretty great price. I'm not saying Gamrot's not going to get Fiziev down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gamrot, that's what he does. Gamrot's a hard worker in there. Like, if he grabs a leg, he doesn't just give up. He tries to go for the double. He works Different hard. Different angles. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. But, like, Fiziev is going to get up. Yeah. Like... That's just the way it is. Uh, I think Viziev is going to win. And he's going to light so, him up. I think he's going to leg kick Gamrot. I think he's going to hurt Gamrot in, in the fight. Gamrot gets too close like he did to Jalen Turner, and Jalen Turner almost shut his lights out. I think Viziev can easily, easily knock out Gamrot in this fight. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem at all for him. At mi- minus 160, I think, is, is a really, really good price. I think he wins this fight a lot of times and even you know ends it in a KO a lot. I mean, this is for watch, me just watch the Gaethje fight if you want. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the wrong. Watch the Fizzy Gaethje fight and you'll yeah. and that'll turn your turn your opinion around. Yeah, definitely. Um I I think um yeah. Uh, overall I think we 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 said our two cents, man. Uh Gamrot is a hard worker in there. He does like to pressure a little bit, uh, but Fiziev pressures maybe a little bit more. Um, and when that happens, uh, you know, Gamrot won't be able to do his normal, I pressure you, I do a fucking chain wrestle with my punch and take you down. It's going to be different. Gamrot's going to have to adapt to Fiziev because Fiziev already knows what Gamrot does. He's proven he can do, you know, get up off the ground against Dos Anjos and do things like that. Gamrot has to prove that he can strike with an elite striker like Fiziev. Not, I don't think it's going to be easy for know. him to adapt, man. I just don't know. I just don't think so. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it anyways. Just as I'm a huge fan of Fiziev. We both are. We've seen him for, you know, three, four fights coming that he was going to be in the top ten, and we, we felt like he was. And This, this is a is, great main event. It's one of our guys that we this love to watch. This is a great watch. main event. If you haven't seen Fiziev before, just watch out for those kicks, those body kicks. They're absolutely monstrous. 155-er, but it sounds like he's like a uh, 205-er when he, when he makes contact. It's amazing power. So, all right, guys, we're going with Fiziev, and um, Good main I, event. I just really Good love this. Card. I love the matchup. I, lo- I think it's I think it's a great, great, great victory for Fiziev, and uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for listening.